Okay. Right. Yeah, there you go. Right. Let's see here. Um, uh, 210. The idea of this verse is combined with the word adorn of the previous verse. It is that women are to adorn themselves, dot, 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 in godliness with good works, instead of in braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing. Paul is making a point that what is right and proper for a woman in church is a spiritual adornment of godliness, mixed with a physical adornment of doing that which is right and honorable. If you mix those two together, she does what's right and honorable, and she's uh, um, godly, uh, then you've got the woman that Paul is speaking of. He was probably thinking of someone like Tabitha, who is named also Dorcas in Acts chapter 9. Peter was called to heal this woman, and the same general idea of her character was seen there. So let me take you back to Acts chapter 9, and it says there, speaking of Tabitha, uh, 9.36, it says, At Joppa there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. Okay, so it almost mirrors what Paul says women are supposed to do here. Um, and, you know, her good works were to make clothing for the women. And uh, when Peter showed up at the door, the women were showing her all of the clothes that she had made. And the tense of the verb kind of indicates that they were wearing those clothes. And they're saying, she made these for us. This was what she did was to, to make these garments for us. So uh, this Tabitha was a Jewish woman who followed the noble traits of the faithful woman of her, women of her culture exemplified by the faithful wife of faithful wife of proverbs 31 proverbs 31 she was a person of deed and exemplary action paul is thinking of such women of god and directing the gentile women of the church who are coming into the church of god to act in this manner his directions are to timothy and it was timothy's responsibility and thus that of all later pastors to nurture this in the women of God. Okay, now this isn't something that I focus on. I don't spend a lot of time telling women how they should dress and, you know, what they should and shouldn't wear in the church. But here we are. We are in this now. So I'm doing my job by teaching this right now. So you can't say I never did this because we're doing it now, right? Okay, and if somebody came to me and said, well, you know, what does the Bible say about this? Then I whip out my Bible and say, let's go to Timothy. So like I said, this isn't the kind of thing I focus on. It's, it really has never been necessary in this church. People just are, we're kind of a, what do you call it when people are? Uh, uh, humdrum. No, not humdrum. <laughs> but, you know, when we're, uh, what's the word that they use? Salt of the earth or something like that. The, the term where people, we're just kind of like, we, we match the general tenor of society. Not a lot of rich and famous people, not a lot of poor beggars. We're just kind of, we fit in with the rest of society pretty well. Average Joes. So, average Joes. There you go. There we, go. Um, we do have a couple multimillionaires, and uh, they, they love to come here and park their Lamborghinis right out front. But um, that's, that's yeah. Anyway, um, let's see here. 